Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to We the Revolution, a turn-based strategy game that allows you to play through the French Revolution, or I guess a sort of a, a fictionalized version of the French Revolution, uh, as a judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal, and apparently also as a general in street fighting as your brother's army comes to town to try and overthrow your tyrannical regime. Uh, that's about as good of a summary as I can give based off where we're at right now. This was taken from a live stream from a channel from a couple of days back, so I'll go ahead and turn it back over to my live stream myself. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me th know your thoughts below, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Back to our Fox French Revolution. Act 3, Day 4. Paris is under siege. Dreadnought might be a more ambitious project. I am slightly more interested in Dreadnought. I had hoped that naval action would be more like uh, Talonsoft's Age of Sail 2, which had like 90 different battles you could fight, although the campaign probably wasn't as interesting as Ultimate Admiral. All right, so France is under siege. We have to do a trial before we fight the next battle. Uh, the revolutionaries, common folk, and aristocrats all want us to execute this person, which probably means it's some sort of heart-wrenching heart story that I'll feel like absolute shit if I... Uh, if I if I accuse her, no, Martin. This is a this is a different game. Midwife Cesser. Aye, that's me. Did you strangle Mister and Mrs. Uh, Peak's child? I had to, Monsieur le Judge. Unfortunately, the child was born a girl. What? <laughs> what? R regardless of what happens here, Captain Flack, the French do win. You, I guess you're right. You're a man. You wouldn't understand. I just want women to stop suffering. Oh, God. Then why did you strangle them? <laughs> because the world is too too painful. We must we must not uh, have her suffer. Okay, what's the, what's the case file here on this? Just press guilty now. <laughs> well, she did admit to it. The daughter of Jean and Marie Pic died immediately after birth. The father testified that he heard the child crying loud and intensely, yet when he entered the room, occupied by his wife, one servant and a midwife, uh, sorry, one servant and a midwife, his daughter was not breathing. The doctor called Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Pick, arrived the next day. He noticed strangulation marks on the infant's neck, and he was the one who informed the guard. The investigator was unable to interrogate the parents as they were both in shock and filled with despair. We found numerous signs of the birth in the untidy bedroom. Among them were forceps left by the midwife, who, as we learned from the servant, left in a great hurry. It looks as though she were escaping. We managed to establish the midwife's identity as Claudine Cesser. People say she has bad luck when it comes to delivering girls, as most of her infant female patients did not make it. We decided to arrest her as a suspect. Investigator found an open Bible on her kitchen table. Evidence Sessler's Bible is an old and cheap, old, cheap and worn out edition. She had underlined numerous excerpts in pencil. All right, so strangulation marks, forceps, and the Bible are the, are the um, evidence marks. I'm a little worried here because we've been dealing with the, uh, the, um, Madame de Stiles attempt to get women equal rights. And I'm a little bit worried if everybody's behind death penalty for this, if we if we execute her, is it going to turn like the women in the city against us somehow? And then that'll hurt our defense. Okay. Um, so we have five influence points. Let's go ahead and, well, actually, first off, did the defendant didn't confess to the crime? Yes. All right, so let's go back to the case file and let's check out these questions. Ask as few questions as possible. Yeah, clearly. I mean, she just admitted to it. So strangulation marks would be the... Is that the instrument of the crime? Or is it the fort? Well, I guess that would be method, right? Yeah, okay. Strangulation marks are the method. Forceps, I guess, instrument of the crime. And then Bible is offender's personality. So we got all three questions unlocked without a single uh, missed question. Wait, they all lean the jury toward execution. So what's the benefit of acquitting here? Was the child born alive? Yes, Monsieur Le Judge. Did you strangle it with your own hands? No, I had a special bead necklace. It would be faster if I just broke their necks, but I'm not able to do it. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> I put forward a proposal to immediately conclude this interrogation with a death sentence. Not yet, citizen. How could you do something so terrible? I do it for them, Mr. Le Judge, not for myself. I have suffered enough, and they will not have to. Well, that's pretty easy. Um, getting real innocent vibe here, Hamish. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, she hasn't said any of those things in the interrogation. Uh, I guess we'll ask one more question. Do you believe in God? No. What about the Bible in your house? The Bible is, a, is not a holy book, but a manual for men so that they can ruin our lives. Interesting. The letter to the Ephesians, for example, instructs wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as you do the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, uh, men here in the church, that the, and then treat women worse than animals. But you're not doing worse by killing them? I'm helping them. How? Men are dying in the war, so there are fewer and fewer of them, so women have to fight over them. If there are fewer women, men will finally begin to respect them. Okay. My father gave me to a man. He beat me for eight years until he finally drunk himself to death. Uh, okay. So she used a necklace. She... Her husband had been beating her for years, I think, right? Yeah. I don't think it's counter-revolutionary. I guess we'll ask the last question. It doesn't seem like the, the crowd is upset yet. <laughs> I couldn't charge them for murdering their child. Well... Uh, okay. Interesting to see this train wreck. Yeah, I guess. I'm just a little worried again that Madame de Stile is going to turn against us for executing her. Because everybody wants her dead. If we quit, what happens? Eh. If we, if we kill her, everybody likes me more, and that gives me more soldiers. So, death penalty it is. Wow. So, Dincester, you fill me with disgust, and it's with great relief that I sentence you to death. Have her quartered. Uh, I will sleep better knowing that she is not practicing her profession. Sundance, thanks for the follow. All right, so we got all the questions correct. We unlocked all three questions. We get two reputation and two influence. So that's a good that's a good day at the office in terms of like everything went up. That's very rare that we get that. I think I'm going to skip the speech just cuz I don't want to use influence points on the speech. Oh, what's happening now? Did you now? come to visit the English whore? That's the new code name they gave me in prison. I'm so sorry, Grace. The guard should not... Oh, this whole revolution of yours shouldn't. But this is who you are. If I ever get out of here, I will charge you triple. What do you want? To offer you absolution. Since you came to offer it, you must want something in return. What? Madame de Stal. I'm not a panderer, sorry. The only thing I can currently give you is a rat that I killed yesterday. I'm not feeling all that hungry recently. Yet, you are the only person that can help me. That can help Paris. I would love to help, but I don't have anything on de Stal. Absolutely nothing. Did I still not help you enough? I don't remember what she did for us. Um, but as a, as a reminder, so uh, Martinian, this is a game called We the Revolution, where you play as a judge during the French Revolution. Although it's a very fictionalized account of the French Revolution. Um, okay, we'll use our influence here. So carefree, withdrawn, attached, carefree. Give me something I can charge the style with. I 
I don't believe she's so innocent. Help me and you will be freed. And I will not be blackmailed. Strong argument for carelessness. So I think for these two, we'll go with, with carelessness. Strong argument for manipulation. Well, if humility doesn't work for attached, I'm not sure what will. I guess we'll have to see. So we're going to go with careless manipulation. So careless manipulation. <clears throat> and I don't know what this one should be. Maybe manipulation. So careless manipulation, manipulation, careless. Or maybe this should be aggression. I'm not sure. I don't really know which one works for attached. No single Parisian is lacking evidence that can be used against them. Tell me, what can we charge her with when the need arises? I'm not asking for the truth, only something that would be convincing. I doubt you will find anything. Destal is clean. That's why women chose her. I do not believe you are telling me the whole truth. Ask however many times you wish. I can't give you what you want, because I don't have it. Do you really wish to spend so many more months in this place? Help me, and I will help you. The style will get burned trying to blackmail me and the people who fight for the freedom of Paris. Though I would delight in making sure she stays in the fire for longer. Since there is no evidence of her crime, I'll create it. Let me go, and I'll arm you with a charge strong enough to destroy anyone, even someone as innocent as de Stahl. Yeah, we got every question right. We got past the second little check mark there. We succeeded. We get plus four reputation, and uh, Grace Elliott is intrigued. So successful interrogation there i don't remember who grace Elliott was though from like any of our previous interactions it had been a while before i had played this all right so we have options to dine with the officers have a safe path barricades or provision and medicine i think we'll go with barricades no one likes that option dinner with officers safe path barricades provisions and medicine Eh, we'll do provisions and medicine. Apparently my dad doesn't like that. My son doesn't like that. But remember, he has no hands left. And my wife doesn't like that because she hates me because my son has no hands left. And my other son is dead. Interrogation, blackmail, potato, potato, Newhauser, whatever it might be. All right, so we've got a pretty good recruitment of new troops. It looks like they're going to attack us in two places, but we got... Five new levee on masks, two new infantry, four city guards, three musketeers. Meanwhile, they're going to attack on the left, uh, where we have three musketeers, two city guards, and seven levee on masks. They're also going to attack on the right, where we have five levee on masks, three infantry, one artillery, and three city guards. So they're going after two different sections. Um, I can send my nurse over here to support on the left. I think all of these other spots are full up in terms of troops. Yep, these all of these garrisons are full here. So I'm getting more troops than I know what to do with. Now that's important though, because if they do take either of these positions, then they can advance further into France as well, or further into Paris as well. So we'll put two here. And then we'll put the other two here. Meanwhile, since they're not attacking the center, I don't think they can they can move toward the center of Paris. So we'll put these guys here. I'm going to shift some other troops around. I 
Although I shouldn't abandon this center location because they could attack their next turn as well. What's the intelligence about this battle on the right? The battle on the right, they have a large number of troops. Battle on the left, they also have a large number of troops. Shit. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, I feel like if they win both of these battles or either of these battles, we could be in a really tough spot. I can't change the troops that are being attacked, I don't think. So, like, when they're under attack, you can't actually change your troops around. Seven days before relief comes, we really need to hold at least one of these these battles. We won over Grace Elliot, I think. That was a success. So now we have to choose an action. Woman's Rebellion? What? So we have to choose an action here, waiting for the player decision. We can either sign the declaration and gain support of women or burn the declaration and arrest a style. I won't be blackmailed because it is you who does the blackmailing. You destroy your enemies and are undefeated. Who needs women? Oh, God. Let them stay at home. That's their place anyway. Oh, God. Except uh, the style, she should be locked up in a cell and prepared for. And we have prepared for her. I wonder if she'd be as stubborn with her head placed beneath the guillotine blade. Or sign the declaration of women. The last bastion of inequality, falling and trying to stop it, would be unreasonable. Gaining support from the wound of Paris is essential for your continued battle against the enemy. Your signature will be an expression of two... Uh, I'm going to sign the act. Even though I just had a successful... We'll sign the act. We'll see what happens. I don't think anything's going to happen after these battles. So we'll fight on the right against Le Ramel, where we have a little bit of artillery. The enemy has no artillery here, so that should be good for us. They have a large number of levee on mass. You can see here, here's the enemy. The troops in front are levee en masse. Here are our troops in front, levee en masse, and also infantry. They have some three musketeers. So if we go defensive, we won't do a lot of damage. We could also build entrenchments, which will basically do no damage. But I'm not sure entrenchments are the best tactic, given that they have so little, they have no artillery. Frontal assault, suppressive fire, neutral. Neutral seems like the best option to me. So let's go with neutral. He actually goes with a frontline assault. So didn't follow his own preferred strategy. We nearly wiped out their musketers. We did a lot better than we had predicted. Meanwhile, the melee combat goes more in their favor than ours. Okay, so if we go neutral again, we'll wipe out their musket musketry men. If we go front line, we'll nearly wipe out their other guys. I'm actually going to go with front line to not try and knock out their... Alright, they're going to go defense, which may counter my front line. We'll see. But they only have one musket guy, so I feel like front line... Oh, there goes our artillery. Shit. Well, we knocked out their front line, so this should be a victory, but it feels a little bit like a Pyrrhic victory where we're not gonna we're not gonna win by much. Yeah, 
go with frontline. Both go with frontline. All right, so we wiped them out. All right, so first battle of the day is a victory. A costly one, but a victory. Another day held for that sector. Okay. So we'll fight the battle on the left flank here against Jacques-Louis David, who I believe was my friend for a long time. Our effectiveness is 71%, by the way. Theirs is only 44, so that may give us a, a, an advantage here. We'll see if they have any artillery coming at us. They do not, so that's good. They have much more in the way of musket men versus, um, versus uh, sort of melee troops. We have more melee troops. These look like about even numbers. All right, so if we go neutral, we'll impact both units pretty heavily. Defensive, suppressive fire, frontline assault. Frontline assault, we will wipe out their frontline, but we will do no damage to their most, to their largest formation. I would rather try and focus on their largest formation. So I think we'll go with neutral. Meanwhile, they're going to go with defensive. So hopefully that doesn't too much damage, do too much damage to us. Oh, that was bad. They took out most of our ranged weapons. I should have just gone front line and wiped out their melee troops. Paralyzing fear. Residents escape 30% slower. That's great. Um, all right. I guess we'll just try and wipe out their, their front line with a, with a front line assault. They also do the same. All right, so their front line's gone. So it's four musket men on their end, three levee and mass, two musket guys on our end. Looks like front line is still our best tactic. They're going to go with defensive, which is probably their best given their mostly ranged troops. Our musket... Musket tree is gone. Our levee charges. Woo, it's coming down to the bare end. All right, so front line is, I think, the only way to hit them. I think they get to shoot first, but I, I hope they don't knock us out. Okay, they're too weak. They don't have enough men left. So another, com com another ridiculously... Uh, bloody numbers, or bloody battle, but they don't take either of the sections. So both sections of Paris hold. I think that's the second day that they gain nothing in the way of regions in Paris. Another victory for us. Heavy casualties, though. So I am now immediately going to reinforce all these forward sections here. Garrison in the center of the city is full with a good mix of troops. We'll go ahead and uh, add, I think we'll put four of these guys here on the right flank for the levee and mass. We'll put two more here so we can reinforce the front before the next attack. City guard will give four on the left. So those are, I think those are ranged troops. And then we'll go with three infantry. So three infantry, five city guard, five levee and mass, or four city guard, five levee and mass. Puts the garrison at full. Meanwhile, on the right flank, we've got four levee en masse, three city guards, which I think those are all technically melee infantry, so then we'll send these musket men over here and this infantry over here. So these guys are almost full up. So we'll see where they attack next, but we're holding the line for another day, six more days after this day battle until relief comes. Wow, our reputation goes... Well, that's before the casualties, right? 7,000 more casualties. Our, our reputation here is, is nearly maxed out. Plus 8 reputation. Wow. So that should help get us some, some more reserves here. Meanwhile, we're moving on to day 5 of Act 3. Hey, Sergeant Twinkie. How you doing? So 
So another trial here. Paris are very happy. The people of Paris are happy. Um, why do I get a negative three revolutionaries? Dear citizen, we're incredibly thankful for the first time we have the feeling that someone is listening to us, shall we? We shall help the men to fight, the women of Paris. Okay, so I guess that may be why things decreased. Bad relationship with wife and son. My position in the hierarchy has given me plus reputation. Ooh, I've got a I've got a gold uh, a gold little coat thing on my statue with uh, with the what are they the olive leaves or whatever the, the Caesar thing. My reputation is almost maxed out at seventeen. Meanwhile, I have a medium relationship with the aristocrats, high with the revolutionaries, high with the common folks. I'm guessing I got those negative ticks because of giving the women the right to vote, maybe? Meanwhile, the revolutionaries want us to acquit this person. The other people want us to kill him. If we take a look at the verdict, we'll see death penalty will make the revolutionaries dislike us, but we'll, we'll actually gain, we'll gain more than we'll lose here. If we acquit, meanwhile, we'll lose... Well, the revolutionaries will absolutely love us. The other folks will kind of have a tepid... So really, this this verdict is not super critical. We could have a, a, a perfect relationship with the revolutionaries and a medium relationship with the other folks, or we could have a very strong relationship with the common folk and sort of a medium relationship with everybody else. Paris is happy, again, so that's good. Case file compi compiled by Nathan Isereff. He's com he's accused of fraud. The gl golden laurel membranes. Thanks. Ooh, I like that. I like that uh, emoji there, Sergeant Twinkie. It's pretty sweet. All right. Compiled by Nathan Esref. Marcel Bloch, a 26-year-old court guard from the north of France, directly before the beginning of the revolution, here he's, he served as an artilleryman in the second section of the second company, the second battalion, good lord, just a lot of twos, of the colonel's general regiment. After 1789, he moved to Paris and joined the court guard, where he still works. His superiors and colleagues describe him as an exemplary and committed employee. During a few drinks at a local inn, Marcel admitted that all these years he had been lying about ever serving in the army. Oh, this is the guy that we were investigating on the side. Military service was a prerequisite for joining the court guard. A thorough investigation led to the suspicion that Bloch had forged his documents that proved his experience in the army. Investigators found two artillerymen from the section Marcel Bloch claimed to serve in, Pierre Richard and Michel Montand. They denied remembering Bloch, and a document from his former commander was obtained. Colonel Chabert's statement, I hereby declare that the name... Marcel Bloch does not appear in the records of the 2nd Demi Brigade, nor was I able to find him in the records of the pre-revolutionary Colonel General's Regiment. Please bear in mind that the aforementioned records are incomplete. Part of the documentation was destroyed by soldiers at the beginning of the revolution in conjunction with its support by the Infantry Corps. Colonel J.C. Chabot, commander of the 2nd Demi Brigade. Okay. So... The questions that will unlock... or the, the things that will unlock questions is join the court guard, lying documents, and, or, I guess, artillerymen in the section. So as comrades, I guess that would be an accusation. So that unlocks the first of five questions. We can only make one mistake. Uh, joining the court guard. Um, I don't know if that's any of those. Forged documents. That would probably be accusation. Okay. It also could be method. So we got two of those questions. So far, we're doing well. There's no traps on this one either. Uh, joining the court guard, meanwhile, that's the accusation. Nope, oh, nope. So joining the court guard's the offender's personality. And then lying is the accusation. So we unlocked all the questions. That was relatively easy. Um, so let's start asking him, I guess. Please mention in the protocol that the court already recognizes the identity of the defendant, Marcel Bloch, a court guard at the same courthouse citizen. Do you understand the charges against you? No, Monsieur Le Judge. You were accused of forging a document that proved your military experience. You claim to have served in the 2nd Battalion of the Pre-Revolutionary Colonel Guards Regiment, currently known as the 2nd Demi Brigade. According to the indictment, you lied in order to be hired by the court. Bloch could have benefited much more from his crime. I will bear that in mind. How do you plead? Monsieur Le Judge, I swear that I have not deceived anyone. I'm afraid that evidence and circumstances say otherwise. Too afraid to go to war, but still hungry for medals. Um, okay. 
Why did you join the court guard? I came to Paris hoping to find a better life after the revolution began. A court guard seemed well paid and people respect the uniform. Was that important to you to wear a uniform? My father fought in the war. He used to say that the uniform is much more than just clothing. He wanted to see you in the army. He didn't say that, but he wasn't a man of many words. He kept the buttons from his uniform, you know, the shiny gold ones in his drawer. Did you trick the Parisian court to fulfill a childhood dream? I simply joined the army and risked my life. Father was right. You feel different in the uniform, more honorable. They probably didn't want him in the army, so he started lying. Whoa! Very strong opinion in the court to kill him. Did you forge a certificate of military service? I didn't, and I wouldn't even know how. I don't know anything about forgery. You said something different at the inn. I was drunk and stupid. I wanted to fool the person I was talking to. I wasn't thinking about possible consequences. As a proud artilleryman, you should, you should not be fond of such jokes. Sometimes when I drink too much, I don't think before I speak, and that time I had a lot to drink. Okay. Hmm. So I don't even have any other ways, any other questions to ask that I can get him off the, like, if I'm, if I'm going to acquit him, I've got to go against the will of the jury, which is going to make the jury distrust me. Uh, no, he didn't defess, confess to the crime. I don't know if it's counter-revolutionary in nature. I mean, uh, did you serve in the artillery? Yes, in the famous double twos, the second section, second company. What cannon? Uh, two eight-pounders. Interesting. Those sections used and still use six-pounders. <gasps> Le shock. Uh, he's, accused of, uh, he's accused of forging documents to claim he was in the court guard or artillery or something. He wants to be in the guard, basically, but he's claiming military service that he didn't have. It's, it's you know, it's, what do they call that again? When you pretend to be stolen valor? He wouldn't even know what end to put the ball in. Well, there's only one place you can put the ball in this. All right, so any questions here? Well, he claimed he operated eight pounders. I mean, I guess I would say it's counter-revolutionary in nature, but maybe not. It's not trying to... He's just... It's fraud. I don't know if it's counter-revolutionary. He wanted to impress... He wanted to escape the village. He wanted to wear a uniform. I guess that's the best. Um, I guess we'll ask one more question since Paris is still calm. Charles Clay and John, my closest friends from the section... You don't keep in touch. Everyone went their own way. That usually happens in the army. Were you able to contact other compatriots? No, I don't remember them. That doesn't prove anything. Thousands of people passed through the regiment. I wasn't friendly with all my comrades. I never even had a chance to talk with some of them. You believe. You have to believe me. How did you get your certificate? It was issued by Colonel Chabert, my commander. We asked him, and he doesn't remember that. Okay. I think it was a was it a stranger or a prostitute? I don't remember. Who did he confess it to? Um, I guess that's a stranger. Death penalty, sir. You definitely seem to have committed the crime. I don't know why the revolutionaries want me to acquit you. I don't understand that, unless it's just, oh, this guy wanted to fight so badly that we, we want him 
We want to let him go. All right, so we have some other crimes as well. A revolutionary is found to poison several members of guests of their inn, spoiled meat, the investigator, and blah, blah, blah. That. So I'm going to appease the revolutionaries by letting off their secondary crimes there. All right. Again, our reputation's pretty high with most of these folks anyway, so it's not as vital that, you know, I want to just keep everybody above the halfway point, basically. Poor fella. All right, so we got four of the five questions. It was apparently a colleague. Uh, meanwhile, five out of five questions answered. Uh, are we unlocked all five questions, plus two reputation, plus two influence? Okay, so we're up to seven influence points now. Next! Off with his head! Skip the speech, just chop his head. Oh, wait, this isn't him. This is, uh, yet another man hurting women. You murdered a child! Come on! You literally murdered a newborn. It's not a his, it's a her, but you know. Oh, we're going to kill two people in one day. <laughs> Off of his head too. <laughs> uh, delicious quadrupeds. Are we eating cats? What's going on? The street empties as the sun sets. You walk along the still warm pavement thinking about delicious supper your wife has prepared. You are so relaxed that you do not notice a woman dashing around the corner. She runs into you with such force that you're both sent flying. She drops a sack, freeing several cats. The woman jumps to her feet and tries to catch them, but two manage to escape. They got away, she yells, unable to decide which one to chase first. No money, no pat, adds the woman. And you suddenly know exactly what's going on. Arrest the woman or leave the woman alone. Arresting the woman will use influence points. I, but, um, yeah, arrest the woman. You're eating cats. Oh my God. Delicious quadrupeds. You grab her by the arm and take her to the nearest guards. The woman looks at you trying to quietly convince you that Pat is superior to the lives of cats. The guards are obviously surprised when you hand them the package. I didn't collect them for me, she says. After some time, they're for our butcher's son. He's a specialist. As the guards take her away, you ponder what she said. The butcher's son. What will you do about the master of the French cuisine? So... Arrest the butcher's son, too. We're just going to arrest everybody using our influence points. That probably was unwise, really, but... All right, and that's going to do it for this episode of We the Revolution, a turn-based strategy game where you play it as a judge during the French Revolution. Uh, this was episode number 22 in this Let's Play series. It was pulled from a live stream from my Twitch channel from a couple of days back. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, we're not too far from the conclusion, I think. I think there's four or five days left till the reinforcements arrive. But until we get to that point, I uh, hope you guys continue enjoying the series, and I will go ahead and sign off here. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thanks for watching, and I'm out.